By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today I am playing against my Patreon, Elmer from Germany. And he is playing with a deck that he has called Gorilla, Gorilla Tactics. And I am bringing my new Counter Burn Brew to the table. So it's a deck I've been working on for a while now. And um, I'm, I'm tweaking it. I'm trying to give it my own little Timmy sauce. Um, and before I go to the actual deck text, um, I would like to point out once again that there's a timestamp in the description below. You can click on the timestamp and it'll take you directly to the games. So if you want to skip the deck tech, be my guest, click the timestamp below and it'll take you to the actual gameplay. Here we are going to continue with the deck tech, starting with the deck of Elmar, my opponent today. So I first would like to look at the deck of my opponent. So I'm playing against Elmar from Germany and um, he actually uh, sent me a little description of his deck after we played our games. And I would like to read that to you because it's quite interesting. He says, my deck is called Green Gorilla Tactics based on the idea to hide in a jungle. And then it says in hashtag, um, in brackets, sorry, Arborea Protection. Put constant indirect pressure on the enemy with the black vice and then strike with a powerful ambush and that is the red direct damage to win the game. And you would never see the actual enemy appear in this green hell as he describes it, just some harmless jungle birds. And those are the birds of paradise. So this is really like, <laughs> it's really nice to read because it's more than just a pile of cards. It's a whole like story connected to these cards. And that's what I what I really like. And this actually, Elmar kind of inspires me as well to create these more like story based decks. Um, um, let's now look at kind of the, the technical part of the deck about what the deck wants to do. So it's obvious that the deck really evolves around Arborea. There are two Arboreas in the deck, in case you're not familiar with the card, it's a Legends card for two green and two. And it, uh, it's an enchant world and it reads, creatures can't attack a player who didn't cast a spell and didn't put a card onto the battlefield during his or her last turn. Now this is very important, it talks about turns. So that means that if you cast uh, instant spells in the turn of your opponent, that you know that you're all good you're all set it's not a problem so when we look at the deck list again of elmar we see quite a lot of uh, instants we see the storm seeker we see the four bolts we see the forks uh, we see the avoid fates so these are all instant spells we see the fogs of course to make sure you don't get any combat damage in so these are all spells that you can play in your opponent's turn and it doesn't affect arborea so arborea makes sure that you cannot get attacked and because you cannot get attacked you can use your direct damage to simply, um, well, to simply kill him. Now there's also the black vices in this deck. They're very important to deal some damage as well. And of course the four chain lightnings. So if you have four lightning bolts and four chains, that's eight times three, that's 24 damage. And, and probably the idea of this deck is I don't need to use my chain lightning or lightning bolts on the creatures of my opponent because I'm simply going to make sure that with my Maze of Ifs, with my Fox, and later in the game with my Arborea, I am not going to get any damage at all. So I'm going to use those 24 damage directly to the face, into the face of my opponent to kill him with that damage. And you know what? I'm also going to add some Black Vices because they can maybe help me. And of course, Howling Mind, Black Vice, Wheel of Fortune. Those are very, you know, traditional, I would almost say, uh, combos. So, by the way, when I look at this deck picture, I notice that there are a few off-colored cards, especially the forks there, very dark forks. Maybe they're proxies, I don't know. Maybe it's another edition. So, Elmar, if you're watching this video, maybe you can let us know. I'm kind of curious. Maybe it's simply the quality of the camera and the way you've edited the picture, because that can happen as well. I also think um, Drop of Honey is an interesting include here. It's also one of those cards that uh, can make sure that your opponent has to sec uh, a creature every turn and it, it's it's a good way when you're playing with green to still have some creature removal um, um, in in your deck so also the the meek stones they could work here whenever i see a meek stone i always think about sarah angels there's a lot of sarah angels in this format and meek stone doesn't work on them but uh, other than that it works great against a lot of uh, creatures so all in all a very interesting um deck here and G Gorilla Tactics, that's what it is, Gorilla Tactics. Um, let's discuss my deck and then go to the actual games. The deck that I am playing with today is a counter burn deck, one of the oldest and most traditional 
deck types, archetypes in old school Magic Gathering. And of course, we know some famous players that play counter burn it, it's not that popular anymore lately by the way i haven't seen it that often but some of the famous players that i know at least are, are steven menendian uh, i believe he won in 2016 the uh, eternal central world championships in the united states so that's of course a huge accomplishment and also gordon anderson plays with this deck i believe it's his favorite deck not this deck but with a counter burn deck uh, i believe it's his uh, it's, it's his favorite deck uh, to, to play with. Of course, we know him from Flippin' Orbs. If you don't know Flippin' Orbs, Google it. It's great. It's a great podcast series. Um, and this is the deck picture of my Counter Burn deck. So Counter Burn is basically refers to playing with Counter Spells. So you see four Counter Spells in the Mana Drain and the Burn refers to the Direct Damage Spells. So here you see four Lightning Bolts, four Chain Lightnings and three Psy Blasts. Now, the first thing that you'll probably notice with this list is that there are no Surrender Befreeds in here. Um, the reason is I wanted to play City in a Bottle main. I think City in a Bottle is such a powerhouse in Swedish meta, two mana to cancel out an entire expansion. And not to mention you're canceling out some of the strongest creatures in old school magic. I mean, um, Urnum Jin is extremely, uh, extremely popular. Surrender Pefrit, extremely popular. With these two, I take care of them. I take care of Loas. I take care of City of Brasses. Yes, I also play with Loa and City of Brass. But you know what? I can decide when I play out my um, my City in a Bottle. So when I have an active Loa on the board, obviously I'm not going to play out my City in a Bottle. But hey, guess what? If my opponent has City in, um, a Loa out or plays with a lot of Arabian Nights, I'm going to play out my City in a Bottle. So that's really something um, that you have, have to keep in mind. So I'm not really worried about canceling that out. Now, something I do want to mention is my mana base. I'm playing with 21 lands. I'm playing with Mox Ruby, Mox uh, Sapphire and Soul Ring. So you could say 24 mana sources. Now, the thing that worries me a little bit is that I'm playing with seven basic islands and my Mox Sapphire. So I have eight blue sources that are not influenced by my Blood Moon. And why are blue sources so important to me? Well, I want to be able to counter, I want to be able to play my counter spell for two blue mana. So my question to you is, would you add an extra basic island to this? And if so, what would you take out? I'm only playing with two basic mountains, so I kind of feel like that's okay. I want to leave that. Um, but yeah, that's that's my, that's my question, because that's something I worry about. And that's um, why I want to test this deck a little bit more to kind of look at, okay, do I have enough blue basic islands? And is it not interfering with the, the Blood Moon tactic that's in this deck as well? Because I I'm, ideally, I always want to have two blue uh, mana open with this deck. Now we also look at the sideboard. Maybe you notice the two disintegrates. I've put them in there because of Troll Disco. So there are a lot of players now playing with Troll Disco or playing with Rook Egg decks. Now Rook Egg, of course, also is taken care of by the City in the Bottle, but still, um, I could decide to take out my Earthquakes in, in against those decks and board in my two Disintegrates. So, okay, this is it. This is my Counter Burn deck. Let me know what you think of my Brew. I'm really curious. Um, let's go to game number one and, uh, and see how both of these decks are going to perform. Game number one, and um, it's my opponent, Elmar, that he, uh, I believe he's on the play. He's sitting on the right. I'm sitting on the left with the Timmy playmat. I'm actually playing upside down, so you'll see my hands coming from the top of the screen. You're like, what? Is he a wizard or something? Oh, I am a wizard, I guess, but uh, just to clarify that. Um, so let's see. Elmar is putting the dice together, so he's on 20, I'm on 20. Let's get this going. There's a Taiga. And there's a Mox tapping the Tiger here. There's a Black Vice. Good start here for Elmar. That means that I'm definitely going to 17 here. Drawing card number eight. So I have to start emptying my hand. And there is a Soul Ring. That helps a little bit. And there's a Basic Mountain tapping two here, a Howling Mine. I mean, it's not bad against my deck because I've got a lot of cheap burn spells, but on the other hand, I mean, I'm already on 15. I not a colored mana here. Playing a Chain Lightning. So that means that Elmar is going to 17 probably. It looks like it. So he is going to 17 here. 
Can I play out anything else? I cannot. So that means I still got a load of cards in my hand. Tapping. Oh, there's a chain lightning. Make matters worse. Going to 12. There's a library of Alexandria for Elmar. It's not going to be all too useful for him right now. Only one card in hand still. Look at that. Taking two more damage. Going to 10 here. And I'm looking at my hand. I want to dump some cards because I'm already on 10. And I guess I'm a little bit in the tank here. The thing is, when you're playing against these decks, you know, oh, I'm going in, gonna be in bolt range soon. Oh, that's why I'm thinking a lot because that's here's the side blast. It's just not ideal because I'm dealing damage to myself as well. Going to eight here. Oh, he's playing a fork. Oh no. Oh, that's bad news. I'm on four. Oh, of course, if I would have known. Oh man. Okay, so with my side blast. I'm kind of killing myself here. Maybe should have I should have waited until his end step. This is actually now now that I think about it, um, that is definitely a little play mistake. It wouldn't have made much difference, but still, I mean, who knows? So it's playing another chain, and that's it. That's game. I'm dead. Wow, <laughs> that's a quick game number one here, and um, we are going to our sideboard. So I guess I have to really think. What I'm going to do, I'm definitely going to board in some uh, blue elemental blasts, that's for sure. And uh, I'll just have to look very critically at my at my own deck and see what I can do and how I can play differently in the second game. Well, Elmar, that was a really quick and impressive first game. So uh, let's give these players some time to sideboard and we'll see them in game number two. Game number two, at least I'm on the play here. And uh, so I, I cannot get that. Black Vice against me for a three full damage. That's probably gonna help here. Playing a chain game, uh, turn one, and of course you start playing differently when you know that you play against uh, a Black Vice deck. And there's a chain to me as well, so we're chaining each other. We're actually both playing with four bolts and, uh, and four chains, I believe. So we're both playing pretty aggressively. And there's a second island, means I can counter, and of course also that mocks Ruby maybe to play a lightning bolt end of turn. Let's see what Elmer can do. Playing a forest here, passing turn, playing another island, just passing turn here, probably have a counter spell in hand. And there is a black vice. Am I going to counter it? I'm not countering it, interesting. Drawing instead, taking no damage at the moment. There is a bolt on me, so I'm going to 14 here. Not really doing anything at the moment, really playing that control game. There is, ooh, and I'm able to counter that. I think that's very important here, that Wheel of Fortune. I'm able to counter it because Elmer's almost out of cards. And playing a City of Brass here, tapping four, playing that Suchi, so still having that counter spell if he wants to play a crumble or a shatter on my Suchi. Obviously game one went very fast, so maybe he didn't get the info. Maybe he expected to play against, let's see what happens here. There's a fox, so not a crumble, but a fox. So that means no damage here for Elmar. Second main phase playing another island and passing turn. So what I wanted to say is maybe Elmar anticipated on seeing a Surrender Pafrit and boarded in his red elemental blasts. Of course, they're still very useful against my deck because you can use them against those counter spells. Attacking now, putting Elmar on 13, playing another factory here. So things are looking good for me. I think Elmar really needs an Arborea here. Playing a Rod of Ruin instead. But that doesn't make me nervous. And look at that, playing another Chain Lightning. So Elmer's going to 10 here, animating my factory, attacking him for six now. And he needs another fog. Doesn't seem to have it or doesn't want to play it out yet. So he's on four now. And in this game, you can really see that the vice is not doing any work for Elmar, where in the first game, the vice was very decisive. Look at this. <laughs> oh, playing an earthquake to finish the game. He's showing 
his hand with the forks and the red elemental blast and interesting here is I remember thinking okay he has a green mana open and a red mana open with that that uh, uh, tundra uh, taiga I should say and I was thinking is there anything he can do against an earthquake could this kind of in a way backfire at me because the earthquake actually killed my Suchi and my Mishra's uh, factory but I concluded that in that color combination there's nothing really that he can do against it with just one mana of either um, red or green so I decided to go for it and it's uh, that means it's 1-1 we're going to game number three here game number three and um, it's always good to see a third game but again you know uh, my opponent he's on the play if he can find an early vice I'm still thinking about that first game that was just you know such a shocker for me uh, playing a basic force year passing turn playing a city of brass and that's it for me as well so not very explosive openings here and there's another four stepping two here playing the howling mine I don't mind the howling mine as long as I don't see a black vice there oh I'm actually discarding interesting discarding a city in a bottle I didn't board them out then I guess because there are not really any Arabian night threats in his deck so maybe I should have boarded that one out playing a howling mine so I'm gonna draw three now Wow so if he can get a black vice on I'm really in trouble that's probably his plan so I'm making sure I have two islands untapped because I probably have a counter spell in my hand drawing that many cards and now I have to decide what to discard which is probably why this turn is taking a little bit long so I'm discarding an earthquake here and I'm discarding my second city in a bottle so that means if my opponent can find this Loa um, it's probably gonna stay on the board and he's of course also drawing tons of cards then again a library in this setup is not that important oh there's the vice there is a counter spell if he has a red elemental blast now does he have one I mean he is holding a card oh okay he was actually asking me if he could play an avoid fate to protect his vice um, but he cannot because the avoid fate has to protect a permanent that's in play and it's not yet being cast so we kind of discussed it and how it works so in this case it cannot protect the black vice from the counter spell because it it hasn't yet been uh, played yet it, it's it's not on the battlefield yet and then he plays another howling mine and of course this is also risky for for my opponent because I'm now drawing four cards I'm playing with tons of burn so I'm probably gonna start slinging some chain lightnings and some lightning bolts in his direction but first I guess I'm gonna discard again throwing away my city of brass I don't want to hurt myself more than necessary probably have a lot of lands that don't hurt myself in my hand also throwing away the earthquake and having to deal here with three damage from my opponent the thing is I'm really focused on at least keeping two blue mana open to possibly counter um, a counter a black vice because if a black vice hits the board here I'm pretty much done there is a black vice there is another counter spell and oh look at that playing a fork over the counter spell but I have my blue elemental blast to protect me wow and that's a good thing and that's why it's good to just keep open all those mana if I would have played a chain lightning in his turn I wouldn't have been able to blue elemental blast that fork so you have to play very patiently uh, with this counter burn brew tapping four now playing a suchi and still having two blue mana open to possibly counter if he wants to play a black vice or take care of the suchi now remember I believe he's already now lost uh, three black vice in his graveyard drawing an extra card here from the loa tapping playing another vice but I'm countering it if he has a red elemental blast now or a fork 
Looks like he doesn't. Because then he could have pushed his way through because my I'm tapped out here. Playing four. And there again is that Rod of Ruin. I think I would personally take out the Rod of Ruin. I mean, I, I like the card. I think it's very cool. Maybe move to sideboard when you're playing against a lot of 1-1 creatures. But in this particular build, I wouldn't play it. Um, and pumping my factory here to three, so dealing three damage. Actually, the first damage dealt to Elmar here, so he's on 17. Playing a Lightning Bolt, so he's gonna go to 14. Passing turn. And he's gonna draw four cards. So that's the thing, I mean, he's gonna draw a lot of cards. I'm only on 13, I mean, he has a lot of direct damage in his deck, I mean, this this game is far from over. He has two Maze of Ifs here. I mean, if I can find a Blood Moon, that would be perfect, because it takes care of the Maze of Ifs and the Library of Alexandria at the same time. Paying four, playing the Arborea, the card we discussed in the deck deck. And um, I'm actually, he's got, <laughs> He's not going to read it to me. You have to imagine, I haven't seen, we, we don't see each other's decks, of course. So I don't know what he's playing with. And you don't play against an Arborea every day. I actually have a play set of Arboreas myself, but still, you know, when you're playing in a game, you want to make sure that you know everything. Um, so he's reading it to me. We're discussing the card. And uh, basically, so it's an enchant world for two and two, if you haven't seen the deck deck. Um, and uh, it says, if you don't play a spell in your turn, then the other player cannot attack you. That's kind of like, that's what it is in a nutshell. Look at that, there's a Psyblast. He's going to 10 now, I'm on 11. So if I can keep, I, I can attack, I can deal three damage this turn just with combat damage alone, because the Arborea is not yet working. That's what I'm doing, I'm attacking here. Is he going to use his mazes now? Using his two maze of ifs. And with the untapped factory, I am pumping up my other factory, going to three, and I should actually untap that Suchi. So it's only three damage here for Elmar. And I'm discarding two land cards. And I think I'm just forgetting to untap the Suchi because I should untap it. Because of that maze of if activation there. Doesn't matter too much, but still, you know, you, you always find these, these little little mistakes. That's interesting. But what I wanted to say about Arborea, the strength of Arborea is that you can still play instants. You can still play spells during your opponent's turn. And I think a big part of the tactic of Elmar is based on that. So he's discarding a ton of cards, but it looks like he cannot really do anything at the moment. There's another Cyblast, so he's going to three now. I mean, I am on nine if he has just three lightning bolts in hand. Drawing four cards, I'm sure I'm going to find some burn spell. I mean, come on. And that's exactly what it is. I'm playing a chain lightning here, and that probably means game. Or he needs to find a way to gain some life or counter this spell somehow. But no, that's it. That's game. And of course, he didn't want to play those chains on me because you can see he had two chain lightnings in his hand because if he would do that, I would simply send it back to him so it was, would also hurt him and he's on such a low life total. But uh, okay, wow. <laughs> that's It's a bit of a direct damage battle here, I kind of feel, between these two decks. Um, this is it. This was the episode. So that is a 2-1 uh, victory for me with my counter burn brew but what a nice deck and what a cool idea this gorilla tactics deck of elmar thank you for playing it and showing it here on the channel on timmy talks the channel where we talk old school magic now if you enjoyed this game please make sure you leave a like and leave a comment if you haven't subscribed yet if you subscribe it really helps out the channel to grow you can also click a notification bell i've been told and uh, then you get a special message whenever I update so you're, you won't miss any old school magic games on this channel. What else is there to say? Well, I played against Elmar. He's one of my patrons. If you would like to become a patron as well, you can check out uh, patreon.com slash timmytalks. Actually, there's an info card appearing right now. You can click on that 
and that will take you to the Patreon page. Talking about the Patreons, let's look at the end scroll and check out all the patrons that are supporting Timmy Talks. Thank you so much for your support. Let's go to the end scroll. Ik het dus, ik het dus, zomba kazink.